Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to your next lesson in fractions. Uh, today we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions, um, and so our goal is I can add and subtract rational numbers, and rational numbers is just a fancy way of saying fractions. Now, I'm going to play with these pie pieces again um, so that we realize exactly what we're doing here. Um, so hopefully you can tell by looking at these pieces of pie uh, that this one is split into thirds and this one is split into one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I want to do this, um, if I want to take two thirds and add in one sixth, we have a little bit of a problem here in the fact that two thirds and one sixth are different I can take two-thirds, extend, I take these two-thirds pieces and then I want to add one-sixth and they're all kind of different. In fact, let's get rid of that piece and take one that sort of fits. So this is a representation of two-thirds plus one-sixth, and it's not a whole piece as we can see. But it's really hard to actually come up, well, not really hard, but it's harder to come up with what this actually is until we do something quite simple. And that is, I'm going to split this into two pieces and split that into two pieces. Because if we go back to our original pieces of pie, um, we could see that if I take these two pieces and put them in here, that uh, two-sixth and one-third are exactly the same thing. So when I split these up, I get all of these are now in sixths. And if they're all in sixths, then I can actually put them together um, because I've got one, two, three, four, five sixths in total. So now I can make a representation of what the actual sum of these two things are. So two-thirds plus one-sixth is actually equal to five-sixths. Now doing that uh, is somewhat easy when you have pi pieces and it's somewhat easy when um, one-sixth is exactly or you can fit two of those one six exactly into a third. Uh, what we did there was get a common denominator. We changed thirds into sixes. When I split these up, we could see that um, that these two thirds portion here was actually four sixths. And then we took four sixths and added one sixth so that we could get the five sixths that we got in total. Now. That's getting a common denominator, uh, and it's not always quite that easy, but I want you to notice uh, the, how we can go from two-thirds to four-sixths without actually needing the pi pieces. If I have two-thirds um, and I multiply the top by two, and I multiply the bottom by two, and that's legitimate. If I multiply the top and I multiply the bottom by the same thing, I'm not changing anything. Essentially what I'm doing is just multiplying um, the whole fraction by one because two over two, if I do two-thirds times two over two, gives me four over six, which is where I got in this one too, four over six. but in this one here, um, 2 over 2, anything divided by itself is just 1. And any time you multiply by itself, you're not changing anything. So even though we've changed the way it looks, we didn't actually change what the number was. And that's how we got this 4, 6 here, and we're able to um, add the 2 together. So that's just a, a rough working of why this works. Now we're going to actually do a couple of questions of adding and subtracting. So here we are. Step one says change to an improper fraction if you have to. In this case, there is nothing to change to an improper fraction. Uh, step two. 
Look at both denominators. Oh, maybe, no, that's right. Look at both denominators and find the smallest number they both divide into. This is finding a common denominator. So what's the smallest number that both 3 and 4 go into? Now if you don't happen to know, start writing out the multiples. I'm going to say, what are all of my multiples? Uh, it's, it would actually be easier oops, to start with 4. If you start with the bigger one and start writing out the multiples, then maybe you'll notice that there's one that 3 goes into. So f the multiples of 4 um, are 4. Remember, multiples have to be bigger than the number itself, or at least as big. Um, so f the first multiple of 4 is 4 times 1, which is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. And 4 times 4 is 16. Now if we want to write out the multiples of 3, we can, or we can just test the first few multiples of 4. Does 4 divide by 3? No. Does 8 divide by 3? No. Does 12 divide by 3? Yeah, I think we're on to something here. 12 divided by 3 is actually 4. Now you can always use the two multiplied together. Okay, If you um, really can't find a common denominator, you can always go to 3 times 4 or always multiply the two denominators together. Uh, however, that will sometimes give you a number that's a whole lot bigger than the one that you should get. Um, so doing this method where you pick the bigger one and then write out the multiples and see which one is divisible uh, by the other one is preferable. Okay, so now that I've got the common denominator of 12 and 12, now I have to actually figure out what goes on top. Now remember before, if I have 2 thirds and I want to get it to 12, remember I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So 3 times 4 gives me 12. So I have to multiply the top by the same thing so 2 times 4 is 8. So this is what I need over here. And I have to do the same thing here. What do I multiply 4 by to get to 12? Well, that's 3. And this is 3. So now I have 3 over 12. Okay, let's see what our steps are saying here. Multiply both numerator and denominator of each fraction to get the common denominator. Okay, done. Just did that. And lastly, step four says, add and subtract the numerators. I'm going to highlight that. Numerators. Keeping the denominator, oh, that was weird. Keeping the denominators the same. Denominators the same. Okay. The denominators do not change when you put them together. Eight plus three is 11, and this is going to be 11 twelfths. You don't add 12 and 12 to get 24. It's just 11 twelfths. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing um, with subtraction because the steps are exactly the same. The only difference is when we're done, we're going to subtract the numerators instead of add the numerators. So I'm going to do two more here. We'll move that over. Now, Remember the first step was to change into an improper fraction. You can do it without changing into an improper fraction, but it's much, much easier um, if you change it to an improper fraction. And then when you're done, if you need to, you can change it back to a mixed number uh, if you want. But I'm happy with improper fractions, to tell you the truth. Um, so let's change this one to improper. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So this is 4 thirds. And we're subtracting 5 sixths. Now, we want to uh, get the smallest number that both 3 and 6 go into. So I told you before, you can start by writing out all the multiples of the bigger one. So all the multiples of 6 are 6, uh, 12, not 9, 12, 6, 12, 18, 24. Now, which one of these are multiples of 3? Well, if you start doing them, and you can have your calculator here, um, 
6 divided by 3 is 2, and 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. It looks like they're all multiples of 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. And in fact, they are all multiples of 3 because 6 itself is a multiple of 3. So I can use any multiple of 6 here, but usually we want to use the smallest one. So the smallest one is 6 itself. I don't have to change this 5, 6 at all. I can leave that as 5, 6 and just change this 3 into a 6. Now how do I change 3 into a 6? I multiply it by 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so 4 times 2 is 8. And now I just use my rules for integers. 8 subtract 5 is 3. So I've got 3 sixths and 3 sixths well, 3 is half of 6, so 3 6 is something that you should recognize as being 1 half, so we reduce to lowest terms. Now, looking at the next one, 3 and 5 is what we're going to be looking at for a common denominator. Uh, first, we have to change this into an improper fraction, so we got 2 thirds, and then 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So minus 6 fifths. So 2 thirds minus 6 fifths. We're going to get a common denominator here. And again, we can start by writing out what are all the multiples of 5. So we get 5, 10, 15, 20, and then check them. See which one is a multiple of 3. So just start dividing them by 3. Now, you'll get that this one is, so we could have gotten this by multiplying those two things together. Uh, and that would have gotten the smallest one. That doesn't always get the smallest one though, so it's all right to check, and if you need to, write them out. So 3 times 5 is 15, so I have to multiply the top by 5 as well. So 2 times 5 is 10. And 5 times 3 is 15. I had to multiply the bottom by 3, so I have to multiply the top by 3 as well, so that gives me 18. Now notice this one's going to take us into the negatives because I've got 10 positives and 18 negatives. See, I'm ignoring the denominator right now. That's because it's the numerator that I work with and the denominator stays the same. So I kind of ignore the denominator. I'll just write it down, ignore it. 10 subtract 18 or 10 positives and 18 negatives gives us 8 negatives. And so that is uh, the end of adding and subtracting fractions.